Hey guys, sorry for any of the weird back noise. I got a washing machine going over here. Um, me and Little One are back to bring you guys another episode of Walking in the Word. We're going to do another selection from Beautiful Bible Stories from 1940 by Roni and Company. Um, today we're going to look at Story number 148 out of here. Jesus visits the temple at the age of 12. There is a beautiful wood cutting. I don't know if you can see it. It's Jesus in the temple. And with that all in mind, guys, let's get into it again today. I love getting to share God with you in any way possible, guys. It looks like tomorrow I'll probably be back to doing some regular videos. Um... And thank you guys so much. I love getting to have this time with my granddaughter and stuff. And let's pray real quick, guys. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to come before you today, Lord. Just grateful and thankful for everything that you have for us, God. Thank you even for the hard times, Lord, because they make these wonderful times seem so much sweeter. So much greater in comparison. So much more worthwhile. I'm sorry guys, I got a little one over here who's decided that she wants to eat some little pieces of plastic that I apparently missed yesterday when I was uh, opening a toy. <laughs> um, but God, just keep guiding us, Lord, and directing us, Father God. We ask that you bless this video, Lord, and bless any time that we come together, Lord, over our love for you, our need for you, and, and just unite us in that great purpose of, of being Christians and in the work of the Great Commission, Lord. And we pray a hedge of protection around the lives and a blood covering over the hearts and minds of children and the infirm, Lord, and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Father God. Guide us, lead us, direct us, Lord, and help us to never forsake you in our pursuits, God. We pray all of this in your heavenly, holy, and mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen, guys. I know these episodes have been a little weird. I appreciate you guys. Let me know in the comments if you actually like them or not. Um, all right, guys. Let's. Uh, like I said, it's Jesus visits the temple at the age of 12. And this is drawn from Luke chapter 2. Verses 41 through 52 are the cited source materials here. Um, all right, guys. When Mary and Joseph returned from their sojourn in Egypt, Jesus was a child of not more than three years. Believing that it was unsafe to return to Bethlehem, the Holy Family remained in Nazareth until Jesus was 30 years of age. Although the gospel record makes only one reference to these silent years, it is possible to form many interesting conclusions. From other information given in the New Testament, we know that Mary and Joseph became the parents of several children, including at least four boys and probably two girls. Since Jesus is spoken of as both a carpenter and a carpenter's son, it appears that he assisted Joseph in the work of his chosen trade. Referring to the nine or ten years which Jesus spent at Nazareth before going up to the temple in Jerusalem at the age of twelve, the Bible record says, let me see that. <laughs> the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. These were years of physical health and development, of intellectual and moral growth, and of faithful, loving service to his heavenly Father. He lived a plain, blameless life, unaware of the high calling which soon awaited him. He grew up as did other Jewish boys of that age, taking part in the youthful sports of his day, mingling with neighbors of the community, and joining in the social and religious activities of his people. Yes, that's what he did. Thank you for calling. Jesus was the eldest of a family of seven children, guys. Four brothers, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and two sisters. See? He was therefore given the advantage of being raised 
in a large, happy family and was forced to adapt himself to the joys and trials brought into the home by so many brothers and sisters. His superior traits of goodness were no doubt envied by his younger half-brothers, for they rejected his claim to the messianic office until after his death and resurrection. Since no mention is made of Joseph after he began his public ministry, it is believed that his foster father must have died sometime after the visit to the temple when Jesus was 12 years old. <laughs> she ain't wanted to play with that all day, y'all. <laughs> she ain't wanted to play with that all day, but right now, yes, ma'am. All right, guys, so Joseph and Mary, I love y'all for letting me share with you any which way. Joseph and Mary belonged to the poorer element in the land of Judea. So Jesus was brought up in humble circumstances. The house in which he lived was plain and simple. Its walls were of whitewashed stones, and its floors were of bare earth. The furniture consisted of a small table or two, a wooden chest for clothing, woven baskets for food, earthen jars for water, and a stand on which a stone lamp gave out a flickering light. The beds were woven rugs which were kept on a platform at one end of the room during the day and spread on the earthen floor at night. Luxuries were unknown in the house of the growing child Jesus, and the necessities of meager comfort were often scarcely sufficient. In a tiny case fastened upon the doorpost of the humble home, there was a writing from the ancient law of Moses. Mary faithfully taught the children the principal teachings of the law, and the entire family joined heartily in singing the beautiful psalms of the Old Testament scriptures. At the age of five, Jesus was no doubt sent to school in the village synagogue where he was taught to read. He was also instructed in the word of God from scrolls containing the books of the Old Testament and required to memorize long passages from the Law, the Prophets, and the Psalms. Twice each week, and always on the Sabbath, he attended worship in the synagogue, listened to the rabbi's explanation of the scriptures, and joined in singing the Psalms. Often some members of the congregation would be called upon to explain the scriptures, and no doubt Jesus sometimes gave his interpretation of certain verses. It was the custom for Jews in all parts of Palestine to go up to Jerusalem to observe certain feasts, especially the Feast of the Passover, which was held every spring. i got to stop for a minute, guys. It's so beautiful when you think of him young going to celebrate Passover and the fact that he was the ultimate Passover lamb. It's beautiful what he does for us, guys. Let me get a drink real quick. I'm sorry. Children, however, were never taken to the festivals until they had reached the age of 12. Oh. At which time... <laughs> at which time... A Jewish child... You'll be okay. Do you want to stop for the story? Okay, guys. Jewish child legally became of age and was held responsible for keeping the precepts of the law. When Jesus was a boy of 12... Do you want to get out and play for a minute? Maybe you would like it if it was like this. All right, come on, guys. You guys are going to follow me around. We are going to do this video. As, as a good Christian would say... Come hell or high water, guys. Um, when Jesus was a boy of twelve, therefore, he was allowed to accompany Mary and Joseph to Jerusalem for the annual feast of the Passover. This was the feast which recalled the spring of the Israelites many centuries before when the angel of death stalked the land of Egypt, taking the eldest child in every home which was not protected by the blood of a lamb sprinkled on the door. We're recording this so everybody gets to see it. 
It is significant that the first visit of Jesus to the capital was for the celebration of that momentous event in the history of the nation. <laughs> Just 21 years later, he fulfilled the meaning of the Passover lamb in his own death upon the cross for the salvation of all mankind. As Jesus walked among the courts of the temple, looked upon the great altar with its burning sacrifices, watched the priest in their white robes as they ministered about the altar, and heard the, the rabbis explain the laws of Israel, he was strongly tempted to begin his holy mission at once. His mind was so filled with these thoughts that he did not realize that his relatives and friends had started on the journey back to Nazareth. There was a large caravan of pilgrims traveling the road which Mary and Joseph took on their way home, and they went for a whole day before the absence of their young son was discovered. They returned to Jerusalem at once to search for him, inquiring first among their kinsfolk and friends. Then on the third day they went up to the temple where they found him, conversing with the learned teachers and astonishing them with his wisdom. They gently reprimanded him for staying behind, and he replied, Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? But the time had not come for Jesus to begin his public ministry. He was to be trained by his parents and instructed in the laws of Israel until he was fully prepared for the great work which lay ahead. Thus he returned to Nazareth with Mary and Joseph and was subject unto them. Not until he was thirty years of age, the usual age for priests and religious teachers to begin their work, did he appear again in the public ministries of his appointed office. The Gospel record describes the 18 years between his visit to Jerusalem and the beginning of his ministry in these words, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Of those days of childhood and youth, he could truly sing, The mercy heard my infant prayer, Thy love with all a mother's care sustained my childish days. Thy goodness watched my ripening youth and formed my heart to love Thy truth and filled my lips with praise. These must have been momentous years in the life of the young Nazarene. Shut in from the outside world, he spent much time in silent communion with his heavenly Father, looking across the hills and mountains from his humble home, he could behold the great plains of Esdralon and recall the stories of Israel's victories on that noted battlefield. From the high hills of Nazareth, he could look down upon the road leading from the north country and watch the pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem and could also see the trade route over which great caravans of Midianites wandered and went their way toward the commercial centers of Egypt. Looking in another direction, he could view the great Roman highway leading from Decapolis on the Sea of Galilee to the port of Acre on the Mediterranean. And perhaps he sometimes talked with the legions of Roman soldiers who marched over this road. Thus, for 18 years, the Savior was prepared for his great work of human redemption and for setting up an everlasting kingdom here upon the earth. Oh my goodness, guys, thank you for letting me... Thank you for letting me share God's Word with you guys. I love you so much. And she loves God's Word too. You might not believe, but it might have seemed like she was going to burst into flames at one point. But I promise you, we're all good guys. And we thank you so much for letting us share God's Word with you and God's love with you and my walk with you and just everything, guys. I, trust me, I know these aren't professional videos, but I hope you can feel how much they come from the bottom of our hearts and souls. We love you guys. Say I love you. You don't want to scream now? Ah! We love you guys. <laughs>